Oh, well, good evening everyone. Um, my name is John Levine and I'm a composer of Alpha Music, that's what you're hearing now. And I've invited a very special friend along, um, Alexandra Winman. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> and um, we're going to be talking to tonight about a very special series that we've just issued called the Karmaceutical Range. And um, we're going to be talking about the music and how I met Alexandra and how we came to develop the Karmaceutical Range. And we're going to find out more from Alexandra about her special way of using theta brainwave methodology or techniques along with my alpha music to create something which is quite incredible. It's a lot deeper than just meditation. So now that we've had a nice dinner together and, and organised the whole speech, I've forgotten <laughs> everything. <laughs> So my, th my thoughts were if we just sit down and we ask questions of each other then things that we were supposed to say we'll, we'll eventually say within 10 minutes or the, or the amount of time that we have. So now I need a question from at least um, I would I would actually, I would personally actually really like to ask John how Alpha Music first came about because this is something that I actually don't know yet because I love the music but I want to know more about the history of it. Right, well, um, the quick version because I've written a book that needs to be re-edited and if you know a very good bookshop they might <laughs> like to help. Oh, that's Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what, how it all came about was that I had two hobbies as a child. One was music and one was electronics. Uh, so I'd make up little gadgets and I was playing my toy plastic saxophone at the age of six and um, went on to play the piano and wanted to do it all basically. I wanted to be a composer, I wanted to play in all sorts of bands and I also wanted to learn more about electronics. Whilst I was having fun, my father was doing a job that he hated and he, he was really more of an artistic soul but he was doing a business job and I think the pressures of that job were getting to him and he was becoming more stressed and more uh, anxious about everything and it started to create disease in his body. The first thing that came was diabetes and the doctors said that that was going to cause, uh, well that, that actually came about because of stress and anxiety and then he uh, had uh, diverticulitis, then heart attack, and stroke, and he just kept on progressing through all these diseases um, until un unfortunately at the age of 58 he passed away. Now we were trying desperately to try and work out ways to help him, whether they were uh, normal methods or, or, or med medical methods, whatever we could possibly find. Um, it, I kept on hearing the words, you should stop worrying, you should stop being so stressed. Um, so I made a conscious decision, if, if, that's, if, 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 these, if stress can actually create such terrible problems in a person, then I want to learn as much as I can about how the mind can alleviate the stress or dissolve the stress and to have more control over how, how we are. Um, so that's the journey that I went on to and, and then to fast forward uh, uh, I switched from an electrical engineering degree to a music degree in composition. I studied meditation. Showed They showed us how the brainwaves started to slow down as you meditated from beta when you're stressed to alpha when you're calm, theta when you're dreaming and in a deep meditational state and delta when you're in an unconscious state or an extremely transcendental meditation state. And it was so profound, it, the music, the, the meditation actually did something to me. I really found that I was lifted, I was transformed. And this was no joke, I really knew that it was not just words from a book, but it actually moved me and changed me. I wanted to share that with my father, who was dying in hospital at, with, in, 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 the, um, in the special ward at, at St Vincent's. A guy that was, he loved football, uh, in so we call it soccer in Australia, and he was not only coaching but he was teaching me how to coach so we'd go and watch football matches so he wasn't the type of guy that would probably take to meditation 
or those ideas. So it's uh, increased a lot of the frustration. And then what happened was, um, around that time I heard about New Age relaxation music. It was something that was in the newspapers and I thought, oh my God, I never knew music could actually do something as amazing as this. So I went into the shop and at that stage in the early 80s it was cassettes. I bought a few cassettes and I was waiting for this moment where my whole mind and my body would change like the, my, my consciousness would have elevated or something like what happened when I first learned meditation. But I was waiting <laughs> and nothing happened. And I thought, this is the greatest load of rubbish I've ever heard in my life. And the, the composition degree, you know, they teach you listening and analysis all the time. So I started to analyze this music and I was writing down all the reasons why it didn't work. From a harmonic point of view, from a melodic point of view, from a rhythm <coughs> point of view, from the intention of the composer and the player's point of view, from a sonic point of view, all, all the different points of views, many different myriads and many different dimensions. And my friend said, listen, we're out on a Saturday night, we've just seen a movie, we're you know, out having a coffee and a tea. You're boring as silly talking about all this stuff. For God's sake, you've got your own recording studio, go and do it yourself. So I said, okay, I will. I will do it myself. I will take the challenge. So in 1984, I created a piece of music called Silence of Peace. And now it's called Silence of Peace Volume 1. And everyone said it was calming and relaxing. No one knew what to do with it. So it was just put in a box and forgotten about for 17 years. Okay. I rediscovered it halfway around the world in Poland. People were saying it was wonderful. Husbands and wives were saying they weren't arguing as much. Dentists were using it to reduce anxiety. Teachers were calling it the elixir good behaviour. Mothers were saying that babies cried less and went to sleep quicker. And I just got a whole lot of beautiful compliments, none of which I believed. I thought they were all just trying to be nice to me because John's going through a midlife crisis and he might do something funny. So let's just say some nice words. My engineering brain switched in and said, I can't believe anybody. The only way I can believe that this music actually works is if we put electrodes on the brain and measure the EEG patterns to see if the brain waves slow down. I didn't speak Polish very well, didn't have any money, didn't have any connections and I didn't know what to do living in Krakow, Poland, and discovering this music. So I just prayed and I got an answer. And the answer came from a friend that said, their three little budgies fell asleep in daylight listening to Silence of Peace. And I didn't understand what that meant, they had to explain. It was, they never go to sleep in the day, unless you put a blanket over the cage and turn off the lights. But every time they turned on the music, they went into a meditative state, they stopped talking and started to go to sleep. And that was the moment that I realised that the methods and the principles that are on which I based the music, and one of which we'll talk about later is channeling. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was channeling the music. That had to be one of the principles. Was these principles had some relevance. And from that moment I decided, this is what my life's work is going to be. I couldn't save my father. So I'll try and help everyone else in the world with the music. So that's the quick story. <laughs> I'm gonna to add to that story actually, because um, well, John and I met probably, oh, when was it, December last year? Yes. December last year, just, um, just well, probably a bit before December last year, probably about November last year by a mutual friend, but we ended up coming together and working together on a, um, an event where I did a guided meditation to his music. And that was kind of the first time I became acquainted with your music. We talked about it, I listened to it, I loved it, it was the, the angel music. And then John listened to a meditation I'd done and liked my voice and we decided let's put it together and see how it goes and that's how it began, it was a 12-12-12 event. And then um, I started using John's meditation for myself and for my, my clients, I'm a, I'm a holistic therapist, I teach angelic reiki, um, I also do theta healing which is some of the techniques that I bring into the, the actual CDs that we're working on together. Um, but after I got back from Egypt I kept getting ill and I know it was just a clearing and a cleansing of all the stuff that had happened to me in Egypt because I was there on 2112 and um, I was speaking to John on the phone and I was saying I, I don't know what's going on with my immune system I'm feeling quite low I'm, 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 I can't seem to clear this I keep, I keep getting bugs and John said well how, are you getting enough sleep 
and I said, well, I am, I am sleeping, but I'm not sleeping deeply, and I keep waking up in the night. And he said, oh, I'll send you my Silence of Vision CD, my, my Silence of Vision on MP3, and, and give it a try, because it puts you in a really deep, what he said was a delta brainwave, which is the very deep sleep where your body repairs itself. And I was like, yeah, 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 and I was doing work, and really busy, really busy job, because I used to edit a magazine as well. And I'm sitting on my laptop, working away, and the email from John pinged in my inbox, and I opened the email and I thought, oh brilliant, he sent me the, the MP3, I'll listen to that later. Kind of put it to one side and carried on working. And after about 10 minutes, I was, it was like 11 o'clock in the morning, and I, you know, I wasn't, I don't think I was that tired, I'd had my coffee. But after about 10 minutes, I started to kind of go like this. And I was really, I was like, gosh, I'm so tired, what's going on? And then I realised that the volume on my computer was down so low, I couldn't hear it, but the silence of vision had started playing in the background. I'd actually activated it. And it worked. <laughs> it actually worked. And I was like, oh my god, I got so excited. I turned off my computer and I took it into my bedroom and I, and I, I actually went to sleep and had a couple of hours really deep kip. And it helped me. It got, I started listening to it regularly and it got me right back into balance. And I started listening to it again recently as well. And that sealed the deal. That made me think, I want to work with John Levine. I want, I've, I've, I've had my clients ask me to put guided meditations together for quite some time because meditation is a big part of teaching angelic Reiki and I often get a lot of compliments about how soothing my voice is. Obviously the Aussie accent is not <laughs> must be pretty pretty soothing, but um, it was it was that music and I knew that I wanted to work with John and it, and it just sort of, we talked about it for a long time, didn't mm. we? And it just sort of, it all came together and Karmaceuticals came to life. And um, we've, we've specifically chosen the three topics, I think, because we wanted to start the series with the three main things that most of the people we talk to these days are going through. Which are? Which are <laughs> insomnia, depression, and physical issues, physical illness. Um, and the music that we use reflects that as well, doesn't it? Mm. Um, also, the main reason, um, the main sort of thing about the whole Karmaceuticals package is that each meditation is just less than 20 minutes or about 20 minutes. And this is because everyone we spoke to as well, we're just like, where do we find time for ourselves? Yeah. Where do we find time to meditate? I can't sit down and you know spend 45 minutes to an hour listening to a guided meditation. I have no time. So what this is, is it's the, the music which works on your brain waves. Plus, it's not just a guided meditation, it's actually a deep healing session within the guided meditation because the words that I use and the techniques that I use guide you into a theta brainwave and that helps the music takes you there as well. And the theta brainwave is the brainwave that you're in when your mind becomes like a sponge. It really opens up your subconscious mind and you only consciously use about 5% of your brain. There's like 95% here that is storing beliefs and thoughts and feelings and issues that you don't know you have. I mean, someone could have said something to you when you were six or seven years old that's still causing a reaction in you today. So what the, the objective of these CDs is, is really to open up your brain to get you into that theta brainwave so that you're open to the positive suggestions that we bring in via the music and via the words and the beliefs and the thoughts and the feelings that we bring in into this meditation. But to do it quickly and powerfully because people don't have time. It can work when, when you're going to sleep at night, so you can you can put it on. I've been doing it this week, actually. I've been listening to our own CDs. But they actually kind of work, they do. <laughs> so you can put it on to put yourself to sleep at night, and you can listen to it in the day if you've got like, you know, you want to spend half your lunch break, sit at your computer, just close your eyes, put it in. It works on your conscious and your subconscious mind. So we wanted to sort of cover everything, didn't we, in one package. And what, just to, I was actually listening to uh, them as well when I was preparing to the CAM Expo a few weeks ago and um, I knew that I was going to get less and less sleep so I had on this music which you're hearing now, Raphael, which is the background to the, the healing meditation that um, Alexandra has done so beautifully, the meditation for healing. So I was listening to Alexandra's beautiful voice with the Raphael being played in the background on constant repeat and I think that was the only thing that actually got me through the whole night as I was getting ready to go to a cam expo. The, 
the thing that we just both discovered uh, about what we were doing is that I channeled the music, which is so uh, that it's only been played once with no second takes and no mistakes. And then I discovered later that also Alexandra, when she's recording, she does exactly the same. None of, none of it was pre-written, it's just switch yep. it on and go. <laughs> yes, yeah. so in other words it was channeled. And I have a belief that the intention of the performers and the composer and the authors have a profound effect on the person listening to the music and the words. It's something that science hasn't caught up with yet. The uh, how a scientist can measure intention is something that has yet to come about, I think. Although, interestingly enough, the word intention is used all the time in the courts of law. And, uh, but when it comes to science and, 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 and it comes to trying to measure what intention can do in the healing process, that's yet to be discovered, but just I know from the, you know, from deep down in my whole body and in my spirit, I know very well that the intention is of paramount importance. And when I, we held a symposium, my first symposium of alpha music in Sydney, Australia, two years ago, there was a, um, a healer, a gong master, that was talking about um, two albums of, and these albums were identical, they were of Beethoven of a certain symphony and they did muscle testing, kinesiology on both and they found that exactly the same music played by a different orchestra, each one was by a different orchestra and conductor, one would make you strong whilst the other one would make you weak but to hear the music it sounded exactly the same and then they discovered more when they uh, did a little bit of research and they found that the one that made you strong, the conductor loved the orchestra, the musicians, the musicians were grateful to come to work, they loved the music of Beethoven, so there was a lot of love, a lot of positive emotions, a lot of respect and a lot of positive energy around what they're doing and you can imagine the other CD, the other album, it was totally the opposite, the conductor didn't really like what he was doing, was hoping he could get a better job. The musicians really didn't like the conductor, they, they didn't really like Beethoven. They, they resented their work, the conductor, the music, everything. They would, it was, and even though it sounded exactly the same, the measurement on this, with the muzzle testing, showed a completely different reaction. Mm -hmm. And that's how I believe with the music. I, I was saying to people, I can play music and if I'm in a very nervous state, mm -hmm. I can play it very slow and people will say, oh, that's very uh, soothing, it's very, it sounds very relaxing. But if I would look into your eyes and see how you're breathing and your irises, whether they're changing or whether your mus the muscles in your face are changing, nothing would change. Nothing would change. But um, so I believe that I had to be in the lowest possible state of consciousness to allow you to be drawn down into a lowest, the lowest possible state of consciousness and that in terms of to, to get your brain waves to slow down I need to slow my brain waves right down to the lowest possible and Alexander, exactly what could, I was doing I would just what, like <laughs> yeah. you to share tell us what you do exactly. well I think the, the main thing that we sort of talk about is the theta brain wave but I have a few other kind of um, healing tools in my in my toolkit so before I do any meditation um, and before I did the recordings, I would always open and cleanse the space that I work with. I always call in the angelic energies. Um, can't help it, I'm an angelic Reiki master. Um, and I've also developed, a, well, channeled a new healing system which is called Precious Wisdom. Um, and it's, it, it is, it's actually quite profound and it's really blown my mind and I, and I put myself in that space when I do anything because it's an incredibly protective space. It's about opening your heart and being completely in your heart space. And it's about true empowerment. So it's about speaking your truth through love, through the heart, and in a, in a, in a place of integrity. And it's my intention when I, when I speak the words and when I, when I channel the meditation that you'll get the deepest possible healing for your highest and best good. So we really hope that you enjoy them. It might be nice. 
because I think one of the most important things that we're all learning in this day and age is how important it is to take time out to, to care for yourself and to put yourself first. I think a lot of us, um, we're the first to criticise ourselves and so I think it's really nice to do something nice for yourself. So if, um, if I guide you into this theta brainwave state, it's just a very simple, lovely meditation, uh, would you be happy to have a, a belief such as I believe in myself, I love myself, to be taken into your subconscious? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. <coughs> So if I could just get you all to just relax and close your eyes and just get yourself nice and centred and grounded. Perhaps put your feet flat on the floor. And just start to take a couple of really nice deep cleansing breaths. Just as you breathe in, just imagine that you're breathing into your heart centre. And as you breathe in, just imagine or intend that with every in-breath you're breathing in love and you're breathing in pure light. And with every out breath, you're sending love and light out to everything and everyone in existence. And in this heart space, I want you to now imagine or visualize that coming in from above and below is a beautiful beam or tube of pure light. And I want you to imagine that you are this tube of light. And as you imagine that you are becoming this tube of light, I want you to see how far you can stretch your consciousness along this tube of light. So feeling your feet almost like the roots of a tree growing all the way down into the very center of the earth. And you can call in some visualization and imagine that your, your feet and these roots growing out of your feet or that are your feet, are growing down past all the rocks and the minerals and the earth. And you might want to imagine rubies and diamonds, gold and silver, as you go all the way down into the molten lava. And let's just imagine that there's a beautiful sparkling diamond at the very center of the earth, and then wrap these roots around this diamond. And then bring your consciousness up through these roots all the way back up through that tube of light, which is you. And then stretch it as far as you can, going all the way up. Stretching all the way up into the sky. Into the Earth's atmosphere. Out into space, traveling up. And then just keeping your eyes closed. Just roll your eyeballs upwards as though you're following your own tube of light up into the sky and you might allow your eyelashes to flicker a tiny bit as you do this. This just helps to trick your brain into the theta brain. Just travelling upwards and upwards all the way past the planets and the stars until you get to the edge of the universe and you enter what we call a void space. A beautiful velvety black inky space. And then you can imagine that this black, inky, void space is like a big dark curtain and you throw across this curtain and on the other side is the purest, whitest, most brilliant light you've ever seen. This is the light of source, the light of creation, and then you allow your own pillar of light to connect with this light of source and you expand your consciousness out as far as it will go. And just feel yourself completely connected now to everything in existence. Feel yourself in the complete space of love, of oneness, unconditional love without judgment. And in this space, just set the intention now, or make the command now, that you are going to insert a belief into your subconscious mind and you are ready to receive this affirmation and just repeat in your own mind I affirm now and for always across all times, spaces and dimensions that I love myself 
I believe in myself. I am love. I am enough. And then continuing to stretch your consciousness as far as it will go. See if you can let go of all the thought of your body or, or matter or the density of the room and just fill yourself completely with light. And as you do that, just imagine now that the light is coming down into your own tube of light, almost like a funnel, with all these new positive beliefs and thoughts and feelings pouring down into the crown of your head, almost like a waterfall. And you might feel a little tingling sensation in your fingertips or elsewhere as these new beliefs, thoughts and feelings connect with you on a cellular level. Replacing any negative thoughts or feelings that might have been blocking you with the positive new ones. And then bring that light all the way back down into your heart center. And then where your feet are connected to the earth, you can now start to untangle those roots, bringing the light of Mother Earth all the way back up through that tube to your heart center as well. And feel the space of love in your heart center expanding now. Taking a couple of other deep breaths, bringing love into your heart space and then expanding your heart space out, allowing yourself now to fill your physical body as it sits on the chair in this room where you began the meditation. Just allow yourself to become body shaped once more in your consciousness. And feel yourself now surrounded completely by a beautiful gold and silver violet flame or violet sphere, <coughs> totally surrounding and protecting you. Completely integrating all of the work that you have done. Just make sure that you're feeling nice and grounded and centered. And when you're ready, you may open your eyes and bring yourself back to the Sorry, how do you access the theta brain waves? It's about sort of tricking the mind into going into it. So by doing the visualization, you're bringing the mind into that relaxed state. Mm -hmm. And by connecting to all that is, it really opens up your consciousness, puts you in a heart space, and then, and then opens it up. And by flickering your eyelids up as well, they've, they've actually done studies on how it works. As John was saying with the electro, mm -hmm. electrosonograph, EEG e e e machine to prove that it actually does trick your brain into going into that state. But you don't necessarily have to flicker your eyelids, but for the purposes of a live guided meditation, I find it really helps to get there quicker.